This is from the Crime Wire, The Bizarre Disappearance of Jason Jalkowski. This was dated February the 10th, 2023. Jason Jalkowski was born, and I may, I hope I'm saying his name right, um, J-O-L-K-O-W-S-K-Y. Jason was born June 24, 1981 in Grand Island, Nebraska to his parents, Jim and Kelly. He had a younger brother named Michael. Jason was described as shy, intelligent, and kind. He was a part-time student at Iowa Western Community College and dreamed of becoming a radio DJ. He also worked at a local Italian restaurant called Fazoli's. On June the 13th, 2001, 19-year-old Jason was on summer vacation at his family's home in Omaha, Nebraska, when he received a phone call asking him to come in to work. Since his car was at the auto repair shop, he had to figure out a way to get there, so he called a co-worker and arranged to meet her at nearby Benson High School, roughly half a mile from his home and from there she was supposed to drive him on to Fasoli's. However, he would never show up. Jason was last seen by a neighbor, Chester Link, who spotted him helping Michael take the garbage cans back to the garage and then walking in the direction of the school at about 10.45 a.m. that morning. When he failed to arrive, his co-worker phoned his house between 11.15 and 11.30, but he was not there. The eight blocks between the home and Benson High School were made up of a quiet residential neighborhood with very little traffic. Security cam footage from Benson High School confirmed that Jason never arrived there that day. Jason's parents waited to report him missing until the following morning because they believed that it was necessary to wait 24 hours. According to the blog, Disappeared, authorities initially assumed that Jason was just another teenage runaway and did not begin to investigate his disappearance for 10 days. But his family and friends were certain that he had not run away, explaining that his family meant everything to him and that things were going well in his life. Jason was described by his parents as considerate, the kind of person who would go out of his way to help others. He was an unusually polite person. It's believed that Jason only had his cell phone and no more than $60 on him that day. Nothing else had been removed from his bedroom. The police interviewed his friends, family, neighbors, and co-workers, but were at a loss to explain what happened. There had been no additional sightings of him, and there was no forensic evidence or even circumstantial evidence to work with. It was as if he simply vanished without a trace. Jason was also said to have had no interest in partying and had no known involvement with drugs or alcohol at any time in his life. Following his disappearance, there was no further activity on either his bank account or his cell phone. No suspects have ever been identified in his case. So what happened to him? How did Jason simply vanish in broad daylight? One of the officers involved in the investigation said, Jason's case is the most baffling case he's ever seen. And here are some theories. With no witnesses or evidence of any kind, one can only speculate as to what might have happened. But the main theory which his family believes is that Jason was lured into a vehicle that day and then murdered. Jim and Kelly Jakalski went on to create Project Jason, a nonprofit organization whose purpose is to provide assistance to the families of missing people. They also lobbied for Jason's Law, which was passed by the Nebraska Legislature in 2005 and resulted in the creation of a statewide database 
for missing persons. Kelly was later awarded a Volunteer for Victims Award from U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder. According to the Omaha Police Department, the investigation remains open and active, but it is essentially a cold case. Unfortunately, I will not have him more years than I had him in my life since he was only 19. He was almost 20. That's just hard to believe that he's been gone for as long as he was actually alive. We didn't really have a name for it, but it was kind of like who laughs first game. You would say one word, and it was usually something silly. You would just see who would start laughing, and Jason was always the one who lost. He had a tendency to just start giggling. Despite the enduring pain of their loss, Jason's family remains hopeful that one day they'll have definitive answers about what happened to their son. Well, I would theorize that somebody saw him walking. It could have been a neighbor who knew him and someone in the neighborhood who saw an opportunity in that moment. Um, it could have been a stranger or someone that he vaguely knew who he was walking along and they may have stopped and he may have said I'm trying to get to the school and they may have said get in I'll, I'll drop you off and something happened in that few minutes camera's footage at the school shows that he never arrived there that day but were there cameras outside of the fences it was only eight blocks between his home and the Benson High School. Eight blocks. Um, something had to have happened in that short time frame. It was such a short time frame. Was this neighbor who claims to have seen him walking that day, was he ever further questioned or anyone else in the neighborhood Jason Anthony Jokowski 19 years of age went missing June 13th 2001 after a call okay at the time Jason's car was at the mechanic's shop so his boss offered to send one of his co-workers to pick him up they arranged to meet up at his former school parking lot at 11 a.m. If it was only eight blocks, why didn't they just come on to his home to pick him up? How much farther of a drive could that have been? A minute? Two minutes? That's the strange part about this. If my boss said to me, if I said to my boss, I have no way to get to work, but I will come in if I can get a ride. And they said, well, I'll send somebody over eight blocks from your home to pick you up. I would say, well, you know, just send them on down to my home. And I'll meet them out here on the street in front of my house. Or maybe they just didn't know the neighborhood and weren't sure where to go to. After the call with Jason's boss... He did a few chores and started to get ready for work. He was seen by a neighbor helping his brother empty trash cans. Uh, between 11.15 and 11.30, his boss called the house when Jason failed to show up to meet his ride. Are we sure that this person that was sent to pick him up didn't actually pick him up? And maybe just said that they didn't? I don't know, but it is a very strange case, and there's really very little else to go on. Police initially considered his disappearance a runaway. According to cameras, Jason never made it to the high school campus. The seven-block route between his home and the school are quiet with very little pedestrian or vehicle traffic. There have been no activities on his bank account or his cell phone. 
so he had his cell phone on him. Today they would be able to ping it for any, you know, activity, but were they able to do that in 2001? Jason did not have a history of running away, and he was not considered to be a troubled teen. Foul play is suspected. No clues and no body or no evidence has ever been found. And that's pretty much where this case stands. He was last seen wearing a Chicago Cubs t-shirt, Chicago Cubs baseball cap, black dress pants, and black dress shoes. He was carrying a red work shirt with him. It probably would have had the Fasoli's logo on it. Jason had brown hair, brown eyes, was 6 foot 1 inches tall, and weighs 165 pounds. If you have any information, you may contact the Omaha Police Department at 402-444-5818, or you may call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-843-5678.